Michelle with Candy at Hainsworth Designs. Thank you so much for joining in today. Before I move forward, I wanted to point out that I am actually wearing earrings from my sewing student, Natalie. I bumped into her over the weekend and she had asked me if I ever wore the earrings that she had given me for a present, for a Christmas present of 2016. And I told her, yeah, but I wanted to show her that I'm wearing one in the video. Okay, so this video is for embroidery mentoring student, Kimberly. She is new to embroidery. She uh, currently has a screen printing business and recently added embroidery services to her embroidery business. She is feeling a bit discouraged because she would like to offer uh, products in conjunction to what she is currently offering, which is um, selling items to the local sports community uh, in her area. She had considered offering uh, personalized uh, hand towels to the, um, the local sports organizations, but she thought that the uh, competitors, the local competitors, would just simply undercut her by uh, offering screen printed hand towels at a cheaper cost. So I am going to show her that she can still offer these hand towels and have an edge over her local competitors. Let's go into Walmart and get some supplies. Okay, so I am in Walmart and I am in their towel selection. And as you can see, their towels are starting out at $11.84. But if you look closer, you can see that it is basically their higher quality towels. And so when you are offering towels that is you know since it, we're talking about towels you want to uh, pretty much offer it on a uh, a greater scale that's going to give you the best profit and so offering their highest end towel is not going to be an option and as you can see as I am going down the aisle the prices are decreasing all right, so before we started out at $11.94, we are now at $7.42. This is still high. And, and the reason being is because you want to maximize your profit a lot of the times when um, parents or associations are uh, getting things in multiples, they are expecting a discount. And so offering a fingertip towel at $5.82 before you even provided any of your embroidery services should not be an option. And even $4.72 is still low on profit for your company. And so you just want to go down, keep going down. And uh, one of the things that I do like about Walmart is that it does give you a variety for the most bang for your buck. And if you direct your attention to their brand, their mainstays brand or their basics brand, you're gonna find that the price is substantially lower than the higher end. And so we started out at $11.97 for their uh, bath towels, and we are now at $1.97. And so uh, their hand towels or their fingertip towels are just $0.97, cents, which is substantially lower than $5.82 or, or even $4.78, and definitely cheaper than $7.97. Okay, and what you can see here is that they have a wide variety not really a wide variety, but a nice enough variety that you can select from and offer to your clients. All right, I'm looking at at least six colors here. We have the white, we have gray, we have the beige or the natural, we have blue, then we have like a cream, and then we have the brown. Okay, so uh, basically, um, you know, this is a wide variety for you to become creative and show your client what you can offer them. All right. And so we are going to purchase the uh, brown towel. All right. Because what we are looking for is an alternative to offer the client for um, their sports organization. And so we have the hand towel, the hand towels at 97 cents. All right, and we have the bath towel at $1.97. Now, in my opinion, you might want to stick with getting the, uh, the bath towel because uh, the bath towel is going to give you more of an expansion in regards to uh, materials that you can use to make the, the product that you want to make. And so I'm going to show you in regards to what I am referring to. So if I open the hand towel, you will see that the hand towel, it does offer a, a, a nice area to embroider on, all right? And so this hand towel measures 
15 by uh, 25 inches, but the bath towel, the economical bath towel is like double the size, of course, right? And it gives you much more, much more uh, fabric to use for your products. So the, uh, the bath towel is going to be your best bet. So we're going to put this hand towel back, just kind of fold it up. Hold it up as best as I can. And then we are going to head back, um, I'm sorry, head over to the cash register and uh, pay for uh, this towel. So once again, this bath towel is $197. i will meet you back in my studio, and you'll see what we will do in uh, an alternative to offering regular hand towels with just the, uh, the embroidered name and jersey number on. So I'll meet you back at my studio. Okay, so we are back in my studio and I am at the computer. And one of the things that I want to point out when you are developing your product line is that you want to keep these three elements in place, easy, accessible, and quick. And so when you are adding a product to your line, you want to make sure that it's easy for you to do right? It is easily accessible, meaning that you always have access to it. A lot of the times, just because something's easy and quick doesn't mean that you always have access to it because if something happens to your computer, your flash drive, you have lost it. However, if you have the ability to access it online, right? You can go to their website or go to a website like this portal, Etsy, and always download your embroidery design, then that is a plus. However, Etsy does have a time frame, a time limit on how long you can download your embroidery products. And so that means that if you are a customer of Etsy, let's say for five years, this design, if you purchase this design, may not be available you know, five years later, okay? So you always wanna keep that in mind when you are developing a product line. Easy, accessible, and quick. So to have an edge over your competitor, you want to be able to offer something that they do not offer. Kimberly, Kimberly took my advice in the embroidery mentoring program and ghost shop her competitor. Ghost shopping is simply seeing what your competitor is doing without really identifying yourself. And so you are going in, not necessarily posing as a customer, but you're just going in quietly just to see what they are doing, okay? And she discovered that they do not offer embroidery, both of them. Now, Kimberly, I want to tell you that, you know, I commend you on really ghost shopping them on their social media page and actually going into their stores and seeing what they are doing. However, just because they do not offer embroidery now does not mean that they will not offer embroidery in the future. And you always have to keep in mind that just like you've ghost shopped them, they can ghost shop you. Okay, so right now you will have an edge over them simply by offering an in the hoop product that um, companies like Just Peachy Applique are offering. You can simply turn this pillow, because this is what this is supposed to be, like a softy, a, a softy for a baby. You can turn something like this into a hand towel. And you can offer this in uh, embroidery in regards to personal personalization, or you can add the jersey number. Just Peachy Applique, I believe she does have a website, but I found her on Etsy, and she also is offering this uh, buy to get get it for four. So her average cost of the design is $4. If you buy two, you use the code 50 off, you can get it for $4 as opposed to $8. Okay, and so I've already purchased this, but now I want to move on to the Sew Up Pro program and I'm going to enlarge it so you can see that you're going to make it enlarged because if you don't, then it's going to be the size of a uh, washcloth and that you don't want. So I'll meet you over at So What Pro. Okay, so I am inside of the So What Pro program and I got to tell you that I am still new to using this program. I purchased this about a month ago and I did the trial in the summertime and I got to tell you that I was not pleased nor impressed at all uh, because I was uh, meeting a bunch of challenges and I had a few learning curves. I got to tell you that Eve Lowry from the Baby's Booty was so helpful so helpful with uh, her tutorials that she have online here on YouTube. She does have a playlist and I will post the link below and she also sells the program as well and I actually purchased it from Eve and I also got a call. I got calls from a gentleman named Joseph Cook who is a YouTube viewer, a subscriber of my channel. Uh, 
called my studio several times just to help me with these challenges that I was facing. And so I got to tell you that both of them, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because this was one of the best, when I say best investments that I could have made for my embroidery company, this was the best because it allows me to uh, design a, a image, so to speak, to be quite frank. And one of the things that I really do like is the fact that um, you can merge, you can shrink, you can increase um, stitches, you can, I just love, 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 love this program. And so those of you who are in the embroidery mentoring program, this is an affordable and easy program to start with. And once again, Eve Lowry from the Baby's Booty have a playlist of tutorials. So you're not alone here, whether you get help from me or you get help from her. And if I don't know something, I'm going to go to Eve. And so um, once again, this is a, a good program to start off with. Okay, so I am inside of this program. And as you can see, I already have uploaded the football the football in the hoop design from just peachy applique um, that I purchased off of Etsy once again I will post the link below and I also purchased a font called college outline font off of Etsy as well and I will also purchase the link to this below as well if there is an improvement that so what pro can make I can tell you what it is it's going to be when you are hovering over the designs you see how it doesn't tell you what size the design is it doesn't tell you the format of the design and so you're kind of just kind of guessing at this point because this file comes with a series of formats and a series of sizes so which one is it? I don't know which design or file that I should be looking for until I hover over it and uh, upload it to the um, the grid here. And so I'm going to start off with this one, and I'm hoping that that is going to be the um, the format that I need. And I guess since it didn't come out, I guess oh there it is actually. I'm just going to bring it over here and let's see let's uh increase this some hold on so guys you know i'm still learning okay so if you can look closely you can see the stripes of the football um i don't know if maybe i should have um clicked on the green one here but then i don't know if that's the right i don't know if that's the right uh let's see if that's the right format but then how do i know if the white one is the right format okay so we're going to use the green one so what i'm going to do so you can see it so what i'm going to do is hover on the uh the white one first and just take that away and i'm just hoping that this green one is the um the right font i mean the right uh format now if there is a way that i can tell which uh, format this is Eve if you are watching this or Joseph if you are watching this please tell me because at this point I don't know what this file is I'm, I just going to use it so um, the viewers and Kimberly can see what I'm doing okay so now I want to increase this okay now one of the things I will tell you is that I have heard that you should never pull you should use the resizing tool but I think if you look here and if you look down here, it's but so much we can increase this anyway. So I think that pulling it should be okay. So I'm just going to start in the corner here and just, let's see if I could just bring it up a little bit. That should not alter this design that much. That's what I'm thinking. That there's no way. See, now the reason why a lot of... um people will say that you should not do this is because it alters the stitches right here all right now remember we are trying to make this the size of a hand towel or close to a hand towel maybe not the size of a hand towel but i would say at least close to the size of a football a small football so i am just going to be pulling this and i know eve and joseph is probably just saying candy i know and even probably the people at So What Pro is probably saying, Candy, I know, but I'm doing it. And so I'm also going to go up here and I'm going to increase the density a little bit, maybe by, well, I was going to say by 35 points, but 38 points. Okay. And so whatever blotches or spaces this would have had, okay, because that's the whole point of not pulling it because when you increase it like I was pulling it what happens is the stitches also gets pulled and you will have little uh, uh, cracks and um, 
you know, imperfections in your embroidery. And so that tool up here goes in and fill that in. Okay, and so now I'm going to add some personalization to this. And so let's add this because I actually have an order. Okay, and um, see, once again, I don't know, this size is too small for me to start with. So I'm going to just go down and find a larger font. Um, this font comes in about three or four sizes as well. And um, that one was just too small. Even though I could have just increased it, but why increase it when they have it already made? And so let's click on this one and see the size. Okay, now that one's too big. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go up. And that's why it would be helpful if, if it was already telling me the size of the, um, the, the fonts and so forth. I wouldn't have to um, kind of guess here. I don't know what is going on with that end right there. Look at that. Mm, you see? Well, let me click off of this, maybe something. I hope that's not the case because you know what I'm thinking? Maybe that's a different, maybe that's a different format. Um, I don't know. Why is it like that? Because I'm gonna be doing an embroidery mentoring. I'm gonna be doing not a mentoring. I'm gonna be doing an embroidery report card. And I got to tell you that you see how that happened there? I hope it doesn't stitch out like that because that's going to be horrible. They're going to get F. They, well, I don't give Fs, but mm, that doesn't look good at all. Mm. So anyhow, <laughs> let me um, just finish. Let me just uh, find um, the, the, um, the lettering here and um, the, the child's name that I'm putting this for. His name is Anori, which is an easy name. Um, I'm not sure why the, the letters are coming all the way over there. I'm not sure why he's doing that, but maybe we put it up here and then it's a very easy name to, um, to spell because it's only four letters and I know that it's uh, kind of on top of each other, but I'm going to increase it so we can see it and, um, just put it like so. And you see how already this is very cute. Now, Kimberly, keep in mind, this is a hand towel. So that means that this started out as a, a softy, a, a, like a little pillow. So we're doing this as a football. Imagine doing this as a soccer ball or a, 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 a baseball. That would be fun, right? And so we're doing this as a football. And that's an edge that you can have over your competitors. Okay. And so because if they don't offer embroidery, then they don't offer product like this and if they do then they probably are just buying them wholesale and you are spending literally what two dollars for this because you're gonna buy two so you could get that deal that just peachy is offering and um, once again it's easy it's accessible and it's gonna be quick to do because um, the you know it's not a lot of embroidery involved here okay and so I'm just trying to align the, the letters up here. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do from now, I'm gonna save it. And um, then I am just going to uh, meet you back at the embroidery machine once I uh, upload it. Okay, and so I'm gonna save it here. So I'm just gonna write green, just in case this is the wrong, the wrong thing. I'm gonna write green, okay? And then I'm going to um, take it over to my embroidery machine. So I'm back in the customer's file and I like to save the embroidery designs when they are made specifically for a customer. I like to have a file for them. I'm just going to drag this file to this drive, okay? So I'm gonna click on it and I know you probably cannot see it because I don't think that this software shows it, but I'm just going to drag it over to the E drive and it's gonna upload to my embroidery machine and I'll meet you at the embroidery machine. Okay, so before I left Walmart, I actually had got a text message that I was uh, getting an order. And so I went back into the aisle because it was for a boy and um, I actually purchased a blue towel. Now this is also from their uh, mainstays brand and that this towel is a little bit more than that $1.97 brown towel that we had purchased. This was only $2.74. One of the things that I want to point out, Kimberly, and for you who are considering 
adding something like this to your product line when you are using an alternative to regular fabric meaning like this is a terry cloth towel you want to maximize your profit okay and so for example uh, when you are purchasing something to make multiples of, okay, so in your case, we were talking about the brown towel at $1.97 making the football hand towels. You can actually get two out of that $1.97. And so with me in this case, this towel looks like this, okay, now this is folded, all right, and so I'm just going to cut this in half right and when i cut this in half let me just grab some scissors i'm just going to cut this in half like so and when i cut this in half what it's going to allow me to do is use part of this because remember we are doing i'm doing now in a baby ensemble but i'm just telling you in regards to what you can use this fabric it's going to allow me to um use this not only for the football hand towel that um, i'm going to be making or I guess in this case, because it's a, a baby ensemble, it's going to be a washcloth. Okay, so now I have two parts of it, two halves. One is going to be a, a washcloth or a hand towel, and the other one I can use for a burpee. Okay, and so the investment here was $2.74. In my embroidery business, a burpee is like $12.50 or so. And the, um, the hand towel is also going to be, or the a washcloth is also going to be $12.50. Okay, so that means that we have a profit of $25, right, with an investment of $2.74. All right, remember, Remember, easy, accessible, and quick. It's very easy to make this uh, in the hoop um, football hand towel, which you're going to see in a, in a few minutes or so. Um, and the investment is um, very small, and it's quick, and it's easily accessible. Let's get this over to the embroidery machine, and let's do it. Okay, so before we take it over to the embroidery machine, I just wanted to kind of show you what I was doing here because I guess I was kind of moving kind of fast. Remember, I cut the towel in half. All right, so it looks like that. All right, and then I cut the white part off, okay? And so we are just working with the middle part of this towel. We're using this as the fabric. And now what I'm going to do is just cut it in half again because we're going to have, you know, a top part and a bottom part. And yes, the towel is going to be a bit thick because we're using um, two layers, but that's okay. No one ever complains about having thick towels, right? We complain about having thin towels. And after I do that, then I'm going to take this to the embroidery machine and I'm going to show you how easy how easy and how quickly uh, an in the hoop item can be done because that was one of the things too that you had some concerns that you didn't think that you could do it and you didn't really understand the concept and so let me show you how this is done Okay, so for a high piled fabric like a towel or fleece or something like that, you want to use a uh, water solvy stabilizer or water solvy rather. It doesn't have to be a stabilizer, but just water solvy to go over it just to keep your embroidery stitches sewing on top of the stabilizer and not sinking inside of the fabric, right? And so what I recommend is that when you are using a water solvy, you do not want to use a spray adhesive directly in the center. Some even say don't use the spray adhesive at all but I find that if you don't water salvi can be slippery and it will slip around and bunch up under your embroidery design and so what I recommend is that you use a spray adhesive a light spray adhesive just to spritz the edges of the uh, water salvi where the embroidery is not going in this case we are doing a football and so the shape is going to be here it's not going to be on the edges here so that's where I'm going to apply the, uh, the spritz and I'm just going to lightly spray it and then I'm just going to place it right here on the edge so you can see like so okay so I uh, sprayed it here and then now I'm just pressing it because once again that is not where the embroidery is going to be but now because I'm using eight by eight squares instead of one big strip I'm also going to put some right here and then put it on top of the water solvy stabilizer right there and then once again just lightly spritz now if I have one big piece I could do that I got this water salvy from thread art it is the uh, 8 by 8 squares and it is the cold water salvy I will go to their website if they still sell it I will post the link below because I did buy this a couple of years ago now I'm just gonna put this on the embroidery machine 
Okay, so as you can see here, the embroidery design have already been uploaded, and I've also changed the color steps, okay, uh, according to the colors that it should be at, the color stops, that is. And then I've also switched over the... Um, the thread okay so the thread is on the proper slots accordingly and the color scheme is red white and blue so we are all set here the uh, the hoop is already on the uh, embroidery machine and so you have the brother entrepreneur pro step up from what I have I have the 1000 e I believe you have the 1050 and so this works exactly the same way all right and so you can follow it accordingly all right and so now we're just going to get started by uh, pressing close and then unlocking it telling the embroidery machine that we are ready to go we see the green flashing light we're gonna press that and then direct our attention down and what's gonna happen is it's going to start to uh, do the first step which is going to be that right there the outline and now the fabric is already placed And so if it was just on stabilizer, it would just be telling me where to put the fabric, but I didn't float it. And that's the good thing within the hoop, you can float the project, but I did hoop the fabric. the embroidery machine have moved over to stitching out the stripes on the football and now because we have that water solvy up there it's going to stitch out nicely and the uh, the stitches will not sink into the fabric pile Okay, so this part of the design is just about finished. And now at this point, what you want to do is make sure that you stop your machine. So you want to uh, place it on the reserve stop or just manually stop it. And the reason is because now you have to tell the machine that you want to move on to the personalization process. Otherwise, the design is not created to have personalization inside of it. And so it's going to move to, on to the final process of this uh, design simply by thinking that I am putting over or laying over the fabric and it would just stitch it closed with an open in here so I could turn it inside out but it, we don't want to do that we want to add the personalization and so we're going to direct our attention here okay so I have my little stylus so my fingers are in the way here okay and so what I want you to do is direct your attention up here Okay, and what you're going to see is in this little window, it's going to tell you what the next step of this embroidery design is going to be. We want to skip over the next steps because we want to get it to the personalization. And to do that, we are going to press that positive or that plus sign. All right, and so then it's going to take me to the next step. We don't want that either. And to show the different steps here, it is outlined in different colors. I'm not sure why it's closing it like that when uh, we haven't had a, a, a opening. But for the most part, let's just keep going. We're going to press that positive sign again. And then it's going to take me to this stage, okay? And this is where it's going to direct me to put the, um, the backside cover of it on face down. And as you can see, it has that little opening. But we're not there yet. We still need to add the personalization and so we're going to skip this design as well and then you're going to see the first letter appear and so this is how you would do it with any in the hoop project you will always have to go back okay or skip some steps either go back or skip some steps to get to your personalization otherwise you will finish the product or the embroidery design without adding your personalization and that is a step that you really have to remember I'm going to be doing some more in the hoop projects so you all can kind of get used 
things to it. The first one that I did was uh, the In The Who Baby Bib, and I had a couple of uh, inquiries because they missed that step. But basically, it's always going to be the same way. The embroidery, which is the personalization, is always going to be at the end of the In The Hoop design and you're always going to have to skip some steps to get to the personalization process okay let's do it we are already in the process i have already stitched out my football design purchased from another embroiderer and now i am on to the personalization process and as you can see it is finishing up the letter o but I am a bit disturbed because as you can see, the letter O is uh, nearly perfect. But that N, the N stitched out with some kind of imperfections and I'm not sure what's going on here. But I did notice something else going on in the embroidery files and we'll uh, move on to that in a bit. Now even though this is for an order and at this point it's ruined because of that N, I want to really give this a fair shot and see if it's just that one, that one letter that have the imperfections or if multiple letters have the imperfections. And so I am just going to start removing the, um, the water salvi. I don't like to put water on it. I know some people will say just simply put water on it. I don't like to put water on it. I like for it to come up, which is one of the reasons why I don't like to use uh, spritz in the center of where the embroidery design is going to be because then it would give me a problem. Also, what you can use, look how beautiful that design is. This is going to be a, uh, I know I jumped from one subject to the next. This is going to be a, um, a hand towel or a washcloth. And um, even though I have the imperfections, I got to tell you, Just Peachy Applique did a magnificent job on this football softie. And so I'll be doing an embroidery um, report card on them as well. I'm using a seam ripper to get in between um, the uh, the letters to, um, to get the... Uh, the water savvy and like I said I know some people will say well Candia just spritz it I don't like to do that because a lot of the times when you have little areas like this you know that outline let me just get a little bit closer so you'll see what I'm talking about when you have little areas like this in between like this eye if you put water on it what happens is this water salvi a lot of times have the tendency to turn like into like a glue like glue glue like uh consistency even though it's not glue it feels like glue and it, it it's just a mess on your um your project and it can really distort your project and the overall look of your project as well so i like to make sure that it's dry and this way it just comes up okay now with the seam ripper you want to make sure that you are not poking holes in your project okay and so um, i'm just going to clean it up and once again i'm going to put it back onto the uh, embroidery um, the embroidery machine put the covering over it, and we're going to finish it up even though this end have some imperfections in it okay so we are moving forward to the final part of this in the hoop football embroidery design and so the final process really is just to lay the fabric over right side down and now in this case it's not really going to matter because we're using a terry cloth but if you were using fabric you would want to put right side to right side but overall we're going to put it right side down it's going to stitch another outline around the entire edge of the embroidery design but it's going to leave an opening now before before we place the um the uh, the other part of this which is the back side with this fabric on top of here and let it stitch down I want to add a hang tie and so to use that I'm actually just using a hair tie and I am going to let me just show you how this goes on no big deal how this goes on so we're just going to just like put this right here because it's just going to be a little hang tie and we're going to use some tape and we're going to tape it down outside of the design okay and so if you can see that football outline is still there okay and let's see I have some placement tape right here and I'm just going to uh, put it like so and then I'm just going to tape this down like this because 
this pretty much can be used as a hand towel or a washcloth and this child can use this you know for years to come and so we're just going to put this like that and i'm just going to put another piece of tape like so just to kind of secure it as best as i can and then and then i'm going to uh lay the revert the back side of this um, hand towel on here like so so you see how i'm covering it entirely and you want to make sure that it's nice and flat and um you could take it off the machine i just have the camera in front of me and i didn't want to bump it and so i'm just going to make sure that it's nice and flat with no wrinkles and so forth and then and then I'm going to direct your attention to the machine, okay? To the embroidery machine. And then we're going to press it. And then we're going to take this embroidery machine back to, back to the step where it had that opening. All right. And so let's see if you, uh, if you remember, we had, uh, had to go back. So what we're going to do is we're going to press this right here and we're just going to go back. Now we're going to press the minus sign. All right. And so it's going to take me back and it took me back to the football where it has the opening. That is the stage that we need to be in. And now only thing I'm going to do is press close. And then I'm going to switch the color here because I don't want it to stitch out in that five. I want it to stitch out in the royal blue, which is going to be number two. And then I'm going to press close. Okay, and so now we are ready, okay? And so I'm going to unlock it. And then I'm going to press that green flashing button that's telling me to go. And then the embroidery machine. It's just going to stitch the final step. Now, you have to stop your embroidery machine. Otherwise, it's going to go to the next step. And you don't want that. All right? And so, I've already placed my embroidery machine in the reserve stop mode. And so what it's going to do is it's going to stitch that close all the way around. And that little lump you see is where we had that hang tie. And it's just going to do that all the way around. Okay, so we are coming down to the final part of this embroidery design and it is just finishing up the last part of this uh, in the hoop football and um, as you can see it did not continue all the way around because this is where your opening is going to be and now I'm going to take it off of the machine okay so we are going to take it off the hoop and I just want to show you something once I take it off my dirty hoop. Right. And uh, maybe I'll get a chance to clean up today. I keep saying that. Okay, and so here's your opening. Okay, so you have a nice, generous size opening. Okay, so that means you can put your hand in it. You're going to turn it inside out. But I want you to turn it on the other side where you have um, that, um, that stabilizer. All right, now, because I used a medium weight stabilizer and because we used two layers of the terry cloth, this is going to be thick, all right? And so you want to minimize, minimize the stiffness of this. Nothing you can do about the thickness of it, so you want to minimize the stiffness of it. I suggest cutting the way the stabilizer, obviously you can't do anything about the embroidery part. Some people like to leave the stabilizer on. Now, but for this one, I'm going to leave the stabilizer on only because this is a bit larger uh, hand hand towel, I'm not hand towel, washcloth than I normally would make because I wanted to show you how this could be made into a hand towel so I increased the size, all right? And so that means that I am anticipating this baby having this towel for, year, for years to come. All right, now, when you are cutting this, right, when you're cutting this out, what I suggest is that you... 
you cut around it now you want to cut as close as possible to the um to the edge of the um, the towel okay and what I suggest is when you are cutting the opening we're not cutting all the way here we're gonna cut like here because we're gonna fold this in and so you want to cut it like so like this let me just show you all right so you're gonna have like a little lip okay so you see how it's right here but this is like a little lip this is going to allow you to fold it in okay so from here on you just want to cut as close as possible all the way around okay so we have cut it all the way around and as close as we possibly can leaving you know a, maybe about a half an inch for the lip okay and so we're just going to turn it you know right sides out And I can feel the thickness, but it's not substantially thick with that stabilizer being left on. But if you really want it to be more flexible, then you would have to just cut some of the stabilizer away. But this is just going to uh, provide more uh, security and longevity for this um, washcloth or hand towel. This is super cute, I must tell you. Okay. And so... Just going to uh, bring it out like that so you see how this lip extends and look at that hang tie so this could be cute in a, a shower or something like that you know so what I recommend now because you know we got to put our tag on and a good thing about it is because you Kimberly have a uh, print screen or t-shirt business so to speak you already are accustomed to putting your tags on. And so what I want to just show everyone is when you have like an opening here, a lot of times I like to just put some snips in there so it will um, fold, right? And then because we know that this is a thicker material, what I like to do is I like to spritz it with uh, like some magic sizing or spray starch and then press it close like that and then you know put the iron there just so it kind of permanently stays like that and then insert your a tag like so okay so what I like to do is I like to uh, press this opening fold it like that close so it's easy to um, insert the tag and then temporary seal it with the clips and close it but first I want to open it up and I want to take some um, adhesive spray and spray it in the inside because that's going to help it lay better. And then I'm going to just kind of press it like so, right? And then I'm going to uh, just close it and use those clips to close it. Because if you try to close this with pins, you are going to be fighting with this. And you don't want to do that. Um, save yourself some time get yourself some clips you can get these clips from Hobby Lobby or you can get them from Amazon they have these clips all over the place um, some play people refer to them as wonder clips Hobby Lobby refers to them as quilting clips um, but for the most part you can um, buy these pretty much anywhere okay now before we close this all together what I'm going to do is insert my tag okay and so you know I'm just going to just close it like this and just fold it and put a crease in it with my fingers insert it and just make sure that it's straight right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a zigzag stitch a zigzag stitch. uh oh did I get it let me see if I can grab it a zigzag stitch to uh, close this permanently Okay, so I want to take it to the machine and I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way across and then we'll be done. Adding this in the hoop football with the option of personalization or adding a jersey number is a great consideration for your product line. You'll have the ability to customize it according to team colors. You'll be able to offer this service according to the sport. And so every season, 
Every season, parents will have a reason to come and shop with you because kids play more than one sport, okay? And you'll become their go-to person, all right? And then it will almost become like a collectibles item. Kids will want to have a towel like this in every sport that they play. And so you will become a need. You will become a demand to shop with, all right? And so you can offer this in a football, a soccer ball, a baseball, a basketball. Once again, every season, kids Kids play more than one sport, all right? And so this is going to give you the ability to truly present custom-made, not factory-made, custom-made products to your clients, okay? And so if your competitors are even uh, purchasing football-shaped towels or... Um, let's say uh, 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 baseball shaped towels or soccer ball shaped towels, you will still have an edge over them simply because the cost is going to be lower. Your investment is going to be lower. All right, especially if you pay close attention to the materials that you are buying, like an economical brand towel. Even if you don't have a Walmart next to you, you can find some kind of discount store, not Dollar Tree, because they don't typically have uh, bath towels, but you can find a, um, a towel that's going to keep your investment low and your profit high. All right, and so that's what you want to pay close attention to. All of this is going to give you an advantage over your competitors. All right, and, and people will always uh, appreciate, appreciate, not necessarily select, but appreciate embroidery over screen printing because number one, screen printing have a tendency to crack from time to time. I know that that goes into a no, another different subject in regards to materials that you use, but thread don't crack. Okay, and so we do know that, that you know, this will stand the test of time much longer than screen printing. And so that is what I want you to consider. Okay, so I know that you've already spent close to an hour with me, but I really wanted to recap on what we're doing here. And so you have all of the information before moving forward. And this was part of product line development, so it is important. Okay, and so when you are considering adding a product to your product line, regardless to if it's an in-the-hoop product or not, it needs to be easy. All right, so this needs to be something that you can do in a one, two, three. This is something that is not going to take hours and hours to do, nor is it going to take hours and hours to put together. It can be as, as, as extensive as a personalized baking set, or it can be a single item, as you have seen here, and in the hoop product, okay? It needs to be accessible. And so when you are purchasing embroidery designs, if you are going to be incorporating in the hoop embroidery designs, you want to purchase from website companies that have unlimited access. All right, now Etsy. Etsy does not have unlimited access. That is not talking bad about Etsy, but it is what it is. So that means that at some point, your embroidery design downloads will expire and you will not have access to that embroidery design. So either A, you will have to purchase it over, or B, you will have to save it in another place, okay? It is just easier, in my opinion, if you purchase from embroidery websites that you can just go there regardless to where you are. If you're not at home and you're working on something or you want to have access to something and you have a portable embroidery machine, you can get it without having to either worry about it being in an old computer or on a flash drive that you might not have with you. You can just go online and easily assess that embroidery design. And that is very, 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 very important, especially to your investment. All right, so you want to pay attention to website companies that do not have uh, unlimited access to your embroidery designs, especially if it's a situation where you log in and they tell you that you only have 10 downloads or they give you a date where the download link is going to expire. I know sometimes embroidery designs are beautiful and we got to have it, but you do not want to make that website company or that embroidery website you don't want to make that embroidery website your go-to place because at some point it's going to be a big inconvenience. Number three, it needs to be quick. Okay, so this is something that you are not going to invest hours and hours in. Some in the hoop projects can be a bit intricate, even though it's all made inside of the hoop, especially little purses with pockets and zippers and, and so forth. You want to stay away from those kind of things. Not all in the hoop projects uh, are hard to do. Um, not all of them are easy to do. So you're going to have to gauge it, 
okay and so if you want to offer something with the zipper and you find that it is not that uh, involved then great go for it but if you find that okay you taping down the zipper and it's taking way too long move on and find another in the hoop project that is going to allow you to do this quickly and it doesn't even have to be an in the hoop project once again if you think back to the personalized bacon set that is not an in the hoop project and it is quickly done on the embroidery machine the next fixing the solution when you are selecting a product to add to your product line development you want to have a solution that you are trying to fix okay so don't just go and pick out something because it's pretty or you think it's super cute no it needs to make sense to your community and for your customers all right and so those items can also be trending items all right that's actually a good way too to uh, get customers coming into your business or you know for new products like um, those little fidget spinner holders all right that's trend all right that's not going to be you know something that's so popular next year because uh, people are going to be over it but you might want to offer those things when the trend is in season all right and so you want to fix a solution you want to make sure that people want this item that there's a demand for this item and you're not just picking it because you are emotionally attached to something that is super cute number five it needs to be a low investment and so when you are purchasing this especially if it's an embroidery design it needs to be something that is very inexpensive all right so we're not going to be purchasing big embroidery packs all right so two dollar investment one time is great especially if you can sell it over and over and over again and the first time that you sell this item you are likely to recuperate the funds that you have invested it needs to also be low investment in regards to materials and so we went through to walmart because i wanted to show you the difference in what your prod your profit could be so if you are selecting towels that are 11 12 dollars your profit is going to be extremely low if anything so you want to stay clear away from those things and pay close attention to your investment high profit margin level all right so you want to do something that's going to give your company a high profit margin all right and so purchasing a less expensive a less expensive towel you know it made the profit huge because if i had to purchase the towel at twelve dollars or eleven dollars and now i'm selling the hand towel for 12.50 it wouldn't have made sense but purchasing a towel at a dollar 97 or 274 cutting it in half and being able to make two items increases the profit high and enticing it must be cute it must it, something must entice the customer to want it that includes price and that includes presentation and the overall appeal of the item all right so you want to pick fun colors you want to pick trending colors seasonal colors whatever it is it needs to work for the customer all right so once again get get your emotional involvement out of of, of the of that whole thing and go with what your customers are wanting or what people in general are wanting for that time all right so that's all i have for you today if you like this video give it a thumbs up i will be going into product line development more uh and death and once again those of you who are enrolled in the embroidery mentoring program you already know that i summarized it very quickly here but when you are doing the uh phase for product line development which is uh phase seven you already know that it is much more involved you get a packet and so there's much more involvement and it's more hands-on and so forth and you know in this phase i actually really pushed the embroidery mentoring students because i really want to see what they got you know what i mean i mean by this time we've worked together in a, a, a series of phases so phase seven i really pushed them to the next level of uh showing off their creativity or their weaknesses so i want to see their strengths their weaknesses and so forth but basically this these are the guidelines that you want to follow when you are developing a product line for your embroidery business thank you so much for joining and come visit me in the group embroidery boss if you are an embroidery uh business owner or a hobbyist if not then come visit me and say hello uh on facebook at candyahanesworth.com please follow 
follow me on Instagram. I am really trying to develop my uh, Instagram line. So come follow me. Come say hi. Tell me what you think. And I'm also doing things a little bit differently on Instagram than I am on Facebook. And so you'll get the best of both worlds. And until then, like this, uh, like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Post a comment below. And I'll see you next time.